Okay, today I'd like to tie a bluegill pattern. Um, this is known as Joe's Spider. Um, it's tied by a good friend of mine, Joseph Amanetti. It's sort of his signature fly. Um, Joe's been tying this pattern for a long, long time and catching an awful lot of bluegill and bass on this particular pattern. Um, we like to tie it with a black body and yellow or chartreuse legs, although you can use any combination of, of foam and, and rubber legs that you would really like. Um, we do use a, um, a red uh, tag or a red tail here in the back. You can make that out of marabou or you can um, use hackle. Um, we've been using crystal flash, which seems to hold up a lot better. This fly floats um, in, the, in the surface film, floats low, um, but it is buoyant enough that you can hang a dropper off of it. Um, Joe ties this in a size 6. I like to tie it in a size 8. And what I've got in the vise is they must add 3366 size 8 hook. Um, I find that even small bluegill um, have no problems on um, taking this pattern. Uh, the thing I like about it though with the size 8 hook, very rarely are they able to swallow it. For thread I'm going to be using some Vivas 6 aught. This is in black. <coughs> I'm going to start the thread behind the eye and I'm going to be using what's called an angle wrap. I'm going to lay the thread on the uh, tag end and it the angle there then will pull that thread down onto the shank with the wrap right in front of it. I want to make sure that I get the entire shank covered. And I don't want any of it to be showing through. Okay, I'm going to bring this all the way down past the traditional stopping point, which is there at, at the uh, bit of the barb. Bring it on down around the bend. Okay, then I'm going to come back up. Again, making sure I've got all the shank covered. And I'm going to hang my thread right about a uh, point on the shank. It's right above the point. Okay, for the tail of this pattern, a uh, hot spot, I'm going to be using some crystal flash in red. <coughs> I've taken one piece and I've folded it over a number of times. We'll fold it over once more. And I'm going to cut it off. Okay, I'm going to take it about the middle. And I'm going to make a pinch wrap right on top of the shank here to make sure it stays in place. Okay, then I'm going to go ahead and come down the shank to light the eye in place. And again, I'm coming on down past the barb on down the bend. Okay, then I'm going to take the part, the other part, and fold it back over. Lash it down, so now I've doubled the amount of crystal flies that I've used as a tail. And I've secured it in place. It's not going to come out looped over like that. Okay, I want to cover all this red. I don't, don't leave it showing. Uh, sometimes the back side, you have to be careful, it will show. Okay. Okay, I'm going to go ahead now and bring my thread forward. I'm going to cut off my tail on my hot spot about the length of the shank. Okay, for the body of the fly, I'm going to be using some foam. Um, this is a um, thin um, fly foam. It's two millimeter. Um, it's not exactly fun foam. It's a little different. Um, if you use fun foam, you have to be very careful that the thread might cut it. I've cut off a six inch section of this foam, and it's a quarter of inch in width. I'm going to tie it down right behind the eye.
Okay, then I'm going to lift it up, bring my thread back a couple wraps to them about the one third point on the shank. Okay, I'm going to bring my foam back down. I'm going to lash it in place at this point. Okay, then again, I'm going to bring my thread underneath the foam all the way down to the end of the body. And again, I'm going to lash it down. Okay. Now I'm going to bring it under the fly, back up to the one-third point. Okay, I'm going to bring my foam forward, leaving a little gap there. And I'm going to lash it down. Let's go just a little bit more of a gap. Okay. Then again, I'm going to bring my thread under the shank and make a wrap in front of the eye. And again, we'll lash it down and place there. Okay, once again underneath the shank and over the one-third point. Bring our foam back. And lash it down. Okay, I'm going to clip off the foam. And now I'm going to add some legs. For the legs, I'm going to be using some yellow round rubber legs in medium. Uh, as I said, you can also use chartreuse here if you'd like. I have three strands of, of the round yellow. I'm going to lash it to one side. And I'm going to cut it off just a little long. We'll cut it to length in just a few minutes. Okay, we'll lash it off the other side. Tie it off. A couple good solid wraps to hold it in place. <coughs> okay, we'll position it where we want it. And at this point in time, you can go ahead and whip finish if you'd like. Um, my old eyes aren't as good as they used to be, so I'm going to put in a little indicator here, something I can see when this fly is in the water. As I said, it does ride low in the water column, so you do need a little help sometimes to see it if you don't have the best of eyesight. So I'm going to put in a yellow indicator, lash it down good and tight, and now I can go ahead and whip finish. Okay, we'll cut off our thread. I'm going to cut off our indicator just a little bit. Okay, now we're ready to go ahead and, and um, lengthen our legs. I'm going to cut the front legs just a little shorter than the rear. We can separate them. Okay, then I like to add just a little drop 
of cement on the legs. Okay, and there we have Joe's Spider.